Hey everyone, welcome to Rock Springs Church. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your weekend with us. Wherever this day finds you, we know God has you here for a reason. We'll begin in just a minute with our band starting us out with a few songs, and then our pastor will be out to share a message that will encourage you and help you grow in your walk with God. All together, we'll be here for just a little over an hour. But before we get started, we want to take a minute to tell you about something that is important to our church family. We are excited to continue enhancing our sanctuary with new upgraded seating, and we want your help. We believe every seat represents a soul in the kingdom of God. That's why we want to create an environment that points people to Jesus. You can help us through praying for the people who will fill the seats in this room or through financial support. You can find out more information about how you can be involved in the lobby today. We believe every seat represents a soul. Join us in making a difference for eternity. If it's your first time at Rock Springs, take a moment to fill out the decision card from the seat back in front of you. You can let us know if you have a prayer request or if you made a decision today. Simply fill out the information on that card so we can better serve you. If you have children with you today, they do not want to miss being a part of RS Kids. From babies to fifth graders, we have caring adults who want to invest in your child. Simply follow the foyer to the right, where you will find our connector bridge to the brand new RS Kids building. If you're a mother with small children, you can take advantage of our Mommy and Me room in the foyer. Just ask any of our volunteers, and they would love to point you in the right direction. We are excited to announce that we're hosting Carrie Job live in concert here at Rock Springs Church on Sunday, September 10th at 6 p.m. Carrie is a dynamic worship leader that sings many of the top hits in Christian music. Tickets are only $25 and are available now at the Welcome Center, or you can purchase yours online. Simply visit our website at rockspringsonline.com for more information. We are excited to begin brand new life groups this fall. Beginning September 10th, groups will be meeting on our campus or different areas in our community, and we want to help you find a group that's just right for you. Being a part of a life group really is an awesome way to grow and connect with people around you. Life really is better together. Do you love a good round of golf? Rock Springs Christian Academy's annual golf tournament is coming up on Monday, September 25th at River Forest Golf Club in Forsyth. For more information, make sure you stop by the lobby before you leave today. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We believe you're here for a reason. God has something He wants to say specifically to you right where you are. Our hope is that you leave today encouraged and closer to Him than ever before. Let us know if we can help you in any way today, and be sure to connect with us online to stay up to date with everything happening here at Rock Springs Church. We hope you have a great weekend. Well, good morning. Welcome to Rock Springs Church. We're so glad to have you with us. Would you stand, greet someone around you, and we're going to praise the Lord this morning.
this morning all over this house you can be seated today are you excited about that amazing grace and that amazing love that our Savior has for us I hope you are yeah we worship him today we're so grateful that you're here thank you so much for being with us today at Rock Springs Church we are glad that you're here it's so good to see each and every one of you whether you're joining us right here or if you're watching online or via facebook or one of those places we say thank you you're just as much a part of our church as these people are and we want to make you feel welcome can we let all those people know how good how grateful we are for them hey look as i said thank you for being here if you're visiting with us today i want you to know that you're our special guest we don't want anything from you as a visitor or ask anything from you just take a look at that seat back in front of you. Find the card that says, Welcome to Rock Springs. That was created for you. And if you'd fill out some information on that card, we'd be so grateful. We won't show up at your house or call you this week. We just simply want to know that you're with us today. We don't want to miss you. Uh, if, you if you're wondering today about where to go in your walk with the Lord, or maybe you have questions, be sure to stop by our Next Steps area back there. It's located adjacent to the Welcome Center, and we can answer your questions. But again, we're just so glad that you're here. Uh, we understand that many people have prayer requests. If you've got needs on your heart, you can fill them out on that card that I mentioned. Drop that in the offering bag, and people will be praying for you this week. Um, we're just so grateful that you're a part of our church and a part of our family. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning as we worship Him and invite His presence to come in this place because we realize that if we meet without Him, we've met in vain. So would you pray with me all over this room together? Jesus, we love you, and we thank you for uh, the opportunity to worship you. Lord, I pray that as we sing, that these wouldn't just be songs, but that it would be our heart's cry to you. Lord, I pray that you would come and that your spirit would join us in this place. Your presence would be here. We pray that you would meet needs today, that you would be with Pastor Cameron as he speaks and just anoint him today. And we thank you for what you're going to do, the needs that you're going to meet, and the chains that you're going to break today. Lord, we give you praise because you deserve it. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand again together and sing. We join the fact today that we believe in the Son, that He's here and He's alive. I believe in the Son. I believe in the risen. I believe I overcome by the power of your
How great is your love for my weakness? You took my shame, buried my burdens in fields of grace. You called me out, you lifted me up. How great is your love? And from the Step down to earth in a sin perfection gave your life for us.
Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Because Jesus is calling. Yes, he is. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, it's His blood. Oh, it's His blood. Mistakes come today. There's no reason to wait. Cause Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Cause Jesus is calling. Oh, he's calling. Oh, Father's arms are open wide for 
forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonder? Just raise your hands and surrender to him. Just worship him all over this place. Just raise your hands. He's worthy of worship. He's worthy of praise. He's risen, he's alive, we can praise him. He's worthy of it all, he's worthy. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, oh we sing hallelujah. Christ is risen, and bow down before him. Maybe you need to bow down today. For he is Lord of... I know I need to. Because Christ is risen. Sing the chorus all over this place. Oh, come to the altar. Oh, come to the altar. forgives the precious blood of Jesus Christ oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ oh come to seated. Oh, praise the Lord. Folks, more than we need anything, we need Him to meet with us. Now, I know we get uncomfortable when we get off the schedule. But you know, God doesn't always work on our schedule. You know? And, um, and so I, I just thank the Lord, and I, I think He's got great things in store for today and I just uh, can't wait to see what, that, what all that is. So uh, we get the opportunity to give now and uh, if you've got nothing to give, there's no pressure if you're visiting with us, no pressure. Uh, listen, if we know the Lord, it's a privilege to get to give. I'm so excited to get to give because I know that when I give to the Lord, he, he gives to me and so I can't wait to give to Him. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to give to Him. So let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for your presence that we feel already. So God, you just continue to have your will in your way. And so God, we thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Once 
good morning, and uh, isn't it good to be in the Lord's house? Yeah. Hey, why don't you stand on your feet if you're able and uh, turn to Psalms 46. Psalms 46 and 10, very familiar passage of Scripture that you've probably heard many times before. But we're going to read just one passage of Scripture to begin today, and uh, then we'll We'll dive into a lot of other things as we go along. Psalms 46 verse 10 says this. It says, be still, be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted on the earth. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for your presence thus far. And Lord, we come to this point in the service continuing to realize that we can't do anything apart from you. So God, would you speak and would you move in Jesus' name? And everyone said, amen, amen. You can be seated. Be still and know that I am God. You know, I've, I've always known this verse, or for as long as I can remember, I've heard this verse, and probably you have as well. And for all of that time, I have always thought of being still as synonymous with be quiet. And, and it's true that, that it is saying that. It is saying to be quiet, to relax. I, I begin to look into this word, and, and I'm no scholar, and it's just as easy for you to look into it. Uh, with all the tools that are out on the internet today, it is so easy to do Bible study, and so wonderful, and so many great things are out there. But as I looked into that word, I not only saw that it meant to be still, and to relax, and to also to be quiet, but it also meant to let go. It also meant to let go. And as I began to look through different translations of the Bible, I found a translation called God's Words Translation. And in that translation, they chose to use the definition of the word still and the original Greek word as let go. And this is what it said. It said, let go of your concerns. Then you will know, and that know is to know by experience. You will experience. If you will let go of your concerns, then you will experience that I am God. Then you will experience that I rule the nations and I don't need your help. <laughs> then you'll experience I rule the earth. I've got it all under control if you will just let go of your concerns. And know by experience. And so today I want to talk to you quickly about let go. And specifically control. Let go of control. See, rituals and routines, they're everywhere. They're in everything that we do. We see them everywhere. We're very comfortable with rituals and routines. And, and that's how we like to operate as human beings. I saw somewhere it said that this is the reason why we have them, psychological reason. They exist to reassure people that everything is as it was. And to provide a familiar framework for our daily lives. That's why we're comfortable with them. It's why we don't really like surprises. We really, as a people, we really don't like surprises because we don't like losing control. And if somebody is able to surprise you, you are not able to control the situation or the information. And many times that's why we really, down deep, we really don't like them. It's why we like schedules. It's why we like an order of service. It's why we like keeping things the way that they've always been. We like order. We like predictability because we have a need to to control. We have a need to control the things that we can remotely have the ability to control. We want to control. And see, it doesn't just happen in one age group. It's not like this is just for the young people or just for the older people or just for the middle-aged people. It is literally all of us. From birth to death, we crave control. We desire control. It's literally a pandemic for every one of us that's killing us all, physically killing us all, because control many times shows itself as stress. See, we get stressed out when we lose control. We get stressed. 
44% of Americans feel more stressed today than they did five years ago. One in five Americans experience what the clinical world calls extreme stress, where you're shaking, irregular heartbeat, and depression. Stress is the basic cause of 60% of all human illness and disease. Work stress causes 10% of all strokes. Three out of four doctor visits for every person is stress-related ailments. See, stress increases the risk of heart attack by 25%. It increases the risk of heart disease by 40%. It increases the risk of stroke by 50%. See, stress and control is killing us physically. But it's not only killing us physically, it's killing us spiritually. It's killing us spiritually. Because see, stress relief always starts when we let God be God. When we can let God be God, our stress relief comes. See, it's critically important for all of us to take the very first step in, in the faith journey. And that is to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. To receive him as your Savior is, is critically important for every one of you today. And if you're here today and you've never done that, that is the most important thing you could ever, ever do in your life. It is the most important thing is that you could receive Jesus Christ. But see, here's the problem. Receiving Jesus Christ is about letting go. But the problem with letting go is many of us, we don't let go until we're in a severe place of desperation. We're at our lowest of lows. We're in the, the deepest of pits, the darkest of places. And we literally get to that place where we have nowhere else to turn. Everything else around us has left us. And then we finally let go and we let God become our Savior. And our lives are changed. When we receive him as Savior, our lives change. But see, I said we needed to make him Savior and Lord. Therein lies the next problem. Because to make him Lord of your life also requires letting go. But not just a one-time letting go. But an everyday letting go. Letting go. Every single day. See, lordship is not just for the future, it's for the here and now. He wants to be your, the Lord of your life right now, today. See, and that's the really tough part. It's the really hard part. And every day we've got to decide who's going to be in control of our lives. Who is it that's going to be in control? Is it you or God? Because God's not going to share control with you. It's not going to be him one minute, you one minute, him one minute, you one minute. Oh, let me invite you, God, to take this part, and I'll take the really important stuff. You take the stuff I really don't care about anyway, you know. God's not cool with that. He's not okay with it. It's not okay just to kind of pick and choose him like an a la carte. See, this is a major struggle inside of us every single day. Is God going to have control of your life today? Maybe this video will help explain it just a little bit more. You guys check this video out. Jesus, I have decided to give you this. Really? Yeah. You know whoever sits here makes all the decisions, right? I know, and I'm always making decisions, but you make the perfect decisions, so you just sit right down and start making them. Wow, I'm honored. I mean, this feels great. Kathleen, <laughs> guess what? I just got my new credit card. It's time to go shopping. <laughs> oh, really? I thought your husband and you were going to pay off debt. Oh, yeah. I mean, money's kind of tight, but I figured he doesn't have to know about it. So do you want to oh. go with me? No. <laughs> no? Why? Uh, what I mean is, uh, I don't know. Um, oh. So let me check my schedule, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, yeah, give me a call. Okay. <laughs> Kat, what's going on? What do you mean? Well, I'm kind of one cheek in it here. Look, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You wanted me to sit here, right? Well, of course. And whoever sits here makes all the decisions? Right. So what's the problem? Oh, there's not a problem. I just, I don't know what I was thinking. Really, please, here, sit down. As long as you're sure. I'm sure. Okay, okay. so let's start over. Okay. All right. Kat, I noticed that you've been losing your temper a lot lately. 
Right. So, okay, Jesus, you know what? I know what you're going to say, but um, see, you, do? you don't know the whole situation, you know? Oh, I, well, all I'm saying is that your attitude is a decision. Yes, of course, but I have a lot going on right now. <laughs> well, I know you're under a lot of pressure. Pressure? Jesus, you don't understand pressure, okay? This I, isn't working, Kat. What? We can't both sit on the seat. It's either me or it's you. Okay, I know. You know, I just, I didn't think it was going to be this hard, but here, just take it. No, I'm not going to take it. You have to give it to me. Okay, here. Kathleen, make a choice. I can't. You just did. Yeah, that probably helps. <laughs> so, let's move on. Why do we want control? Why is it? Why is it that we want control, especially when we've got a God who said to us in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said to us, he said, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Why is it that we are all, we are all carrying heavy burdens? We are all weary. See, I'm, I meet with a lot of you a lot. I talk to a lot of you a lot. And all I hear about is the weary and heavy burdens. And we've got a God who's saying, come to me, come to me, and I will give you rest. Why is it that we still want control? I think the first reason is doubt. I think we just don't believe it. I think deep down in our hearts, we just don't believe that he's going to do what he said he would do. We just really don't believe. You know, it's okay to kind of, you know, we, 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 maybe we don't have as much of an issue with something for tomorrow. But for today, I mean, it's really important and I probably need to see this through. We just doubt. Not only that, I, I think it's an ego problem. I think it's an ego problem. I think we think we can do it better. I think I think in my own life that if I'll take control, I can at least kind of guarantee the outcome. I can have control of it and I'll kind of, you know, take it where I want it to go. I'll make sure because I can do it. I can do it. I can give myself what I think I need. It's an ego problem. I think it's also a fear problem. See, if we don't have control, who knows what God's going to make us do? Right? I mean, he's crazy. I've seen him make people do some crazy stuff. I've seen people that I thought were normal and they decided to be missionaries to Syria. Obviously, he's made them go crazy. And I'm scared if I give him control of my life, he's going to make me do something that crazy. I'm afraid if I give him control, he's going to make, honey, he's going to make us give all our money away. Now, I work hard for that money. That's our money. Now, I'm not going to, now, baby, now, listen, the God stuff's all cool until he starts telling you to do something crazy. <laughs> Scared to death. We're afraid that maybe we might have to go in Walmart and stand up on the clothes rack and testify. God's going to make us do something really crazy. And so you know what? It's just better if I don't give it to him. It's better if I just don't let him control me. Because I'm just afraid. But see, what we don't understand is that control blocks God's best for our lives. See, control blocks God's best for my life and for your life when we control. Let me say it like this. God can only bless you to the level of control that he has of you. See, God can only bless you to the level of control that he has of you. Let me say it a different way. God cannot lead you to his best for your life if you're in control. See, if, if, if the best thing for your life is for you to get there, but you're steering the wheel, he cannot drive you to there if you don't get your hands off the wheel. And so control blocks God's best for our life. Now in Luke chapter 5, verses 4 through 6, we see where Jesus interacts with his disciples. And he's calling his disciples. And he, he runs into this guy named Peter for the first time. Obviously, very intentional moment. But we see where he comes in contact 
with Peter. And he is teaching. And then after he teaches, he goes over and he steps into the boat. It just so happens to be Peter's boat. Simon Peter's boat. And he's cleaning the nets out. And, and you got to kind of play along with the story. See, there's, there's things that's within all this. And so they're cleaning their nets out. And I can just imagine Peter looking over going, who's the guy in my boat? Now, he had heard that he's been teaching. He knew he had authority. He knew he was a teacher because he began, he, he started out. And when Jesus had finished speaking, he told Simon, so Jesus knew who he was, row the boat out to the deep water and let your nets down for some fish. Now, we've got to understand the dynamic. I know, and you could read throughout the story and throughout the Bible of Peter's, um, you know, Peter had a pretty charismatic personality. I mean, he was pretty strong-willed, pretty determined guy. And so we go on. So Jesus told him to row out into the deep, let your nets down for some fish. So he's already kind of thinking like, I mean, I know you're a teacher, but are you a fisherman? Like, what? I mean, what's the deal? So he says, master or teacher. I think there's an exhale. I just kind of put this in here. This is kind of the Cameron Evangelical version um, right here. I just kind of think this comma and then it gave, it gave Luke time to write. Simon answered right here was kind of a break where he just went, master. I mean, because that's what I would have done. I mean, because you hear it right here. We, we have worked hard all night long and have not caught a thing. That's not the voice or the words you would use to say, yes, Lord, whatever you say. You don't say that before it. You don't say, we've been working all night, Lord. I mean, come on. For real? And so continuing in the, the Cameron Evangelical version, I, I just added something here, an awkward silence. <laughs> I put that in there. Because I think that, I think it just kind of paused right there. I mean, there's a period, so it, it stopped. It wasn't a run on. And I just think he kind of paused right there like, is that good enough for you, God, to kind of go, oh, you're right. Sorry, Peter. Sorry. But you know what? I'm thankful that when we offer rebuttals to God, that he just kind of stays right there. No, I've already told you what to do. It's not going to change just because you're arguing with me now. And so the silence remained, and then here's what happened. But if you tell me to. But if you tell me to, I'll let down the nets. We need more, but if you tell me to, Lord. We need more moments like that where we're so sensitive to God's voice. And when we hear him speak, it may not make sense to us what he's trying to say to us. But we need more moments where we say, but if you tell me to, Lord. Man, it doesn't make sense. Man, I really don't know if I'm supposed to do that or not. But if you tell me to. But if you tell me to. And then in verse 6, we see... And when they had done so, when they, when they did what Jesus told them to do, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. You know what would happen had Peter not done what the Lord had told him to do? He wouldn't have experienced God's best. He just simply wouldn't. He would not have caught the fish had he not obeyed what Jesus wanted him to do because control blocks God's best for your life. When you control, you block out God's best for your life. See, giving God control, it, the Bible calls it, when we give God control, it, it refers to that as walking in the Spirit. Because understand something, for God to be in control is to be led by the Spirit. If you are in control, guess who's leading you? You. You are led by yourself. If God is in control, you are being led by the Spirit. And so why do we want God to have control? It's because God has a perfect plan for our life. He tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my favorite verses to remind myself. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but plans to give you a hope and a future. Oh my goodness, nobody else is promising me that. 
Nobody else is promising me that. And so what I realize is God has my best interest at heart. And if God has my best interest at heart, then I don't want to control anymore because control is going to block out these things from ever getting to my life. These things will never get to my life if I continue to have my hands gripped so tight around the wheel that God cannot move in and steer my life to where he wants it to go. I got to let go. I got to let go. See, it's a struggle. It's a struggle because there's things in your life, there's things in my life that I really want to control. I want to control it. I'll be honest with you. I really just want to control it. I want to think I know what's best. I want to think I can handle it. I can make this happen, God. But see, what I don't understand many times is that the need for control, it destroys individuals. That craving to control, it destroys marriages. Destroys families and relationships and churches and businesses. And even whole nations are destroyed because of this need to control. Because see, control is a trust issue. Control is a trust issue. When we control, you know what we're saying to God? I don't trust you. When I won't let go of the steering wheel of my life, I'm saying, God, I don't trust you. Plain and simple. But the sad part is, you know what? We've got friends we trust. We've got family we trust. We've got banks we trust with our money, stock markets that we trust with our retirement. We even trust the government, for God's sakes, with things. <laughs> we trust everything else in our lives, but we have a hard time trusting God and His Word. Why? Why? See, if we're going to trust God, we've, we've got to believe some things. Let me give you these things. These are not in your notes, but I'm going to give them to you real quick. We've got to believe that he loves you. You've got to believe he loves you. You've got to also know that, that he's good. He loves you and he's good. And also he has the power to help you. The God that, that I'm speaking of has the power to help you. He loves you. He's good. He has the power to help you. And he wants to help you. He really wants to help you. And also, he will help you. He will help you. A.W. Tozer said this in The Pursuit of God. He said, God must do everything for us. It's our part to yield and trust. To yield and trust. I ask myself this question. How can we trust God with our souls, yet not trust Him with our daily lives? How can we do that? Seems like an oxymoron to me. You trust Him with the thing that is most value for you is your soul? For all eternity, you trust Him with your soul, but I cannot trust Him with my life today, now? How? See, the best thing that we can do for ourselves is learn to let go and let God have control. Now, quickly, I'm going to step through how do we re release control? How do we release control? How do we let go? And I think there's some steps, some things that you can do that will help you, that will help me. And number one, prioritize your relationship with God. You have to prioritize a relationship with God. It cannot be a possibility. It can't be if I feel good. It can't be when I feel like it. Maybe I'll have some energy at the end of the day. It has to be a priority to know God intimately. I heard this quote. The man who would truly know God must give time to him. See, God wants us to put him first in our lives. That way, when we begin to put him first, we, we put our confidence and our trust in him all the time and in everything. Not only do we prioritize our relationship with God, but we pray. Pray. Pastor Benny just last week preached a message about our greatest privilege, and it's prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Why? Why do we not pray 
Something supernaturally happens inside of us when we pray. Our faith, our trust, it's built in prayer. Number three, we listen, trust, and obey. Listen, trust, and obey. And number four is a measuring stick. It's going to tell you how good you're doing. Watch our lives for fruits of the Spirit. See, because if we say that releasing control is walking in the Spirit, then there's some fruits of the Spirit. There's some things that you can look for in your own life to see if you are walking in the Spirit. Because if you are, if you are filled with His Spirit, those fruits will be producing in your life. And in Galatians, the Bible tells us about those fruits. And it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. It's love. See, I can't be filled with God's Spirit. I can't be walking in His Spirit and not love people. And and the good thing is, the, the best part is that doesn't just say love the people just like you. It just says love. Love. Is going to be the joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness and gentleness and self-control. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. Those things will be obvious in your life as you begin to give Him control. Those are measuring sticks. I tell the band and the choir and the people that are around me, if you don't see these things in my life, pray for me because I'm struggling. If you don't see love in my life, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, if you don't see that in me, pray, pray for me. I'm struggling. And if you don't see those things in you, you're struggling. I close with a quote from A.W. Tozier. He said this, He said, the reason why many people are still troubled, still seeking, still making little forward progress is because they haven't yet come to the end of themselves. They're still trying to give orders and interfere with God's work within us. How many today still troubled, still seeking? Still making little forward progress. When are we going to stop giving orders? Stop interfering. In 1896, a gentleman by the name of Judson Van Deventer wrote this account of his experience surrendering to Christ. He said, for some time I had struggled between developing my talents in the field of art or going into full-time evangelistic work. He said this, at last, the pivotal hour came, and I surrendered all. I discovered down deep in my soul a song hidden in my heart, and a new day was ushered into my life. And this was the song. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him. And in his presence daily live. I surrender all. See, I I don't know. I don't know what you might face this week. I know it's going to be trouble. Be hardships probably. Difficulties. I know you're going to face those things. I don't know exactly what. But you don't either. But what I do know what I can already tell you is what God wants you to do. He wants you to let go. He wants you to let go and let Him be in control. And if you've never let go and first and foremost allowed Him to be your Savior, there's nothing more important. Don't leave here without knowing. All you have to do is surrender. Let go. But I know for the rest of us, we're struggling making Him Lord. That's every, everybody else. 
We're struggling. We're carrying sorrows and griefs, worries and fears, doubts. You know what it meant for you to carry? Did you know that? God wants you to lay it down. Let it go. Let Him work it out. He's good. He's able. He loves you. He will. Let Him work it out. You got to trust Him. You got to stop blocking God's best for your life. You just got to open your hands and receive Him. Heads are bowed, all eyes are closed all over this room. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Most important thing that you could do today is receive Him. So I just encourage you. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, would you just bow right there? You don't have to move. You don't have to raise your hand. Just right there. Quietly. Nobody's going to hear you. You can just speak it in your mind. But you know in your heart you need God. And things I've said today have just landed on your heart and it's just tearing you up on the inside. If that's you, I want you to just repeat this prayer right where you are. Jesus, I'm tired of controlling my life. I'm tired of controlling everything in my life. I've made a mess of a lot of things, Lord. And I need you to come into my heart, my life, and save me. God, I know if you can do it for other people, you can do it for me. So I give you my heart. I open my hands. I let go. And I surrender my heart to you. I thank you for Saving me. Maybe you're here today and you say, you know what? I just got to let go of control. I've been trying to control everything in my life. And I need to let go. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? God, I hear you. I hear you. Hands all over this room. We're going to stand on our feet. You can stand on your feet. Thank you for joining us today. I trust you found this service to be inspiring and encouraging. If you made the decision and accepted Christ as your personal Savior, or you just would like prayer, feel free to contact us. There's an email address at the bottom of your screen, and we look so forward to hearing from you. May God bless you, and we can't wait to see you next week.